Hi, this is Robert Hooks, and you are listening to TV Confidential, and keep doing it. Ed Robertson, along with Greg Airbar, welcoming you back to TV Confidential Radio Talk Show about television that always looks forward to talking to Joyce Bullifant. Joyce Bullifant, one of TV's most familiar faces and an upbeat, genuinely positive person whose personal motto, I understand, has always been keep an attitude of gratitude. Most of you listening to us know Joyce Bullifant from her many appearances on such popular game shows as the CBS Match Game, not to mention such films and TV shows as the Mary Tyler Moore Show, Love Thy Neighbor, Disney's The Happiest Millionaire, The Bill Cosby Show, Big John, Little John, and Airplane. Calendar year 2019 marks the 40th anniversary of the release of Airplane. We will ask Joyce Bullifant about that. We will also talk about her book, My Four Hollywood Husbands, My Four Hollywood Husbands, which tells the story of how Joyce managed to overcome dyslexia, feelings of self-doubt, and a series of marriages characterized by alcoholism, codependency, and addictive behavior, and still remain a genuinely upbeat person. Joyce's book offers hope for anyone who finds themselves caught in the web of addiction. We'll tell you where you can find my four Hollywood husbands, and just a sec. Joyce Bullifant can also be seen in the Amazon Prime original movie, I Hate Kids, directed by her son, John Asher, and starring Tom Everett Scott and Titus Burgess. I Hate Kids also marks the final screen appearance of Joyce's husband, Roger Perry. We will ask Joyce about Roger Perry in just a second, but first, as we pick up the conversation, Greg and I are talking to Joyce about working with her son, John Asher. John not only directed Joyce in I Hate Kids, but also in the film Taken. He's such fun to work with because he is an actor's director and the crew loves him and they'll do anything for him. He did one film that people haven't seen that they should see. It's all done in one shot. Not like you go by a pillar so you can reload and do all that. It is one shot moving from one location to another. It's unbelievable and funny. Wow. What's the name of this? Somebody Marry Me. Somebody Marry Me. Okay. It's an amazing achievement. It's a feature? Yeah, it's a feature that he wrote. And um, as my husband Roger said, it would have been great for film students to see it, too. But I don't think people who realize the art in having done what he did... In Russia, they did one at the Hermitage, but they have a scene where they go by a pillar, and that gave them a chance to redo everything. In this one, it's all there. It's I'm. You think I sound like a proud mother? I am. I've talked to you long enough to know uh, how important family is and how proud you are of all of your children, and especially John. Especially all of them. Especially, okay. John just had the same... Uh, struggles that I had that I didn't understand till he went through it with dyslexia. So he had a lot to overcome. And he's the youngest, and you know how that goes. Yes, well, I'm, I'm the next to youngest. I'm the next to Well, get out of town. <laughs> <laughs> no, I mean, each one. You love each child yes. and each person that comes into your life differently. Mm-hmm doesn't mean that you don't love one more than the other. You love each one differently. That is, that is and, true. I stand corrected. I stand. Yes. <laughs> Get a hold of yourself. <laughs> We're talking to Joyce Bullifant, the actress all of you know for her many appearances on such popular game shows as Match Game and Password, as well as her roles in such film, TV, and stage productions as The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Love Thy Neighbor, The Bill Cosby Show, Perry Mason, Alcoa Presents, The Paisley Convertible, Disney's The Happiest Millionaire, and, of course, Airplane. Joyce's book, My Four Hollywood Husbands, is the story of her life and career, interwoven through the story of her marriages to James MacArthur, Edward Mallory, William Asher, and Roger Perry, my four Hollywood husbands, is available through Amazon.com as well as JoyceBullifant.com. You can follow Joyce on Twitter at JoyceBullifant as well as Facebook.com forward slash JoyceBullifant official. Um, I don't know whether you remember this, Joyce, but the first time that you talked to Greg and me on our program, Roger was in the next room. Oh, was he? Yeah. Yeah. And and at one point, you asked Roger to join us on the line. I did. Aren't I a nice wife? 
Yes. <laughs> <laughs> so my poor Roger passed away last year. Yeah. Did you know that? Yes. 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 And not only are we both sorry for your loss, I wish I knew as much about Roger at the time Greg and I spoke to him as I've since learned about Roger. I, I knew he was a talented guy. I did not realize the extent of his experience. You know why? He was such a humble person. Mm-hmm. Uh, he really, really was. I mean, he was an incredible composer. He composed the song, I Wish I Were a Kid Again, mm-hmm. which Barbara Streisand sang on her first black and white TV special. Yes. Wow. And he always loved to say when I'd say, honey, talk about your composing. He'd say, oh, I'm sure everyone remembers the song I wrote for Bing Crosby called Argyle the Christmas Stocking. <laughs> <laughs> I am certain I have that in my collection. I'm not making that up. If you saw my collection, it's probably there. Really? Oh, oh my yes. goodness. I've never <laughs> heard it. I'd love to hear it. Let me, I'll dig it up. <laughs> <laughs> no, he, he, was, he did wrote musicals. Mm-hmm. As a matter of fact, four years ago, we wrote a musical together. And I wrote the book and the lyrics, and he wrote the music, and we performed it here in the desert, mm-hmm. and we performed it uh, in Colorado. It was all to raise money for a center that we started for abused children mm-hmm. in Glenwood Springs. For six years, we did every two-character play we could think of. Then we wrote a show for me to do called My Life Upon the Wicked Stage, Then I did another one called Remembering Helen Hayes, My Former Mother-in-Law with Love. Mm -hmm. And finally, we ran out of everything, so we wrote a musical. (laughs) And uh, we got to raise enough money to build the shelter. Not a shelter. It's a, a center for abused children. You know, that brings up a point that comes up on this show very often uh, about the myths about entertainers, performers, actors, a lot of there there are myths one of them is that anybody who's on a tv show just like those of us who wrote a book are rolling in gold doubloons which is not true and oh. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's right <laughs> and the other thing is that anybody who is a performer or any kind of creative pursuit has a gigantic ego and runs around talking about themselves. That is not the case either. A lot of people who are creative are very introspective, and you have to pry it out of them. I have met a lot of people who are super Except accomplished. for me. <laughs> <laughs> that's not true. That's really not true of you. You're just kidding, but that's not true. Because your credits are are voluminous, and you kid about it. But you're very, really, very unassuming about it, and you make fun of yourself. But by and large, the people that we've met along the way are about the work and also about helping people, doing it for various things, sometimes pro bono, at a loss. It's a very important thing for that to be known. At a loss? I understand that. (laughs) (laughs) But, you know, what you gain from giving back Mm -hmm. is so much more than that loss. It really yes. is. Absolutely, absolutely. And this is a cliche, but it really is true, not only in this industry, but in many industries. I mean, nobody... Yeah, in life, in life. In, in life, exactly. To the extent we succeed, nobody succeeds in a vacuum. At one point, somebody will reach out and help you or listen to you or maybe make a phone call or whatever. And to me, and I think having read your book and having talked to you about your story, uh, Joyce, I think you'll agree. I think it's our obligation as people to pay it forward. Absolutely. You know, wouldn't it be wonderful if every single person did one good thing to help others? Just one. Yeah, it's true. Even if it's a small thing. What a world it would be, huh? Well, one good thing you could do is, especially if you know someone who has struggled with addiction or has struggled in a codependent relationship and maybe doesn't know where to turn, one good thing you could do is recommend that they read Joyce's book, My Four Hollywood Husbands, which, as we said, is available through Amazon.com as well as Joyce Bullifant. 
com and you bear your soul, but you do it in a way that shows, as we just said, that because you were always open to learning and trying to figure things out, if you're open to learning, there's a chance that you can work your way out of that situation. Yes, and it's not always easy, but as, as four Hollywood husbands will explain, it isn't easy, but I wanted to write the book so that I hopefully could help other people see themselves and, and help be able to help them in my stories. And now I'm working on a, another book Ooh. that everybody is just after me to hurry up and finish it, and it's a hard one because it's about helping someone that you love uh, go through the transition at the end of their life. Ah. And um, everyone has been just after me. My children's uh, friends are saying, my, I need this help because of my mom and my dad or my grandparents or friends whose husbands are ill. They're saying, oh, we need to know what to do. And I learned so much through the process of helping Roger. And it was a blessed and sacred passing that we did together and worked out. And I, I'm trying to tell that story the best way I can to help other people. But some days it puts me in a very sad place and I have to, you know, shake myself mm-hmm. out of it and, mm-hmm. and realize that this can be very helpful to people. Well, first of all, take care of yourself. Do what you need to do to get yourself in the space where you can talk about it. Right. But at the same time, Please add Greg and me to the list of people to encourage you to, to write that book. Yes, yes. I right. think it's you, know a, what, you know what I'm calling the title of it? Hmm? I bet you don't. Cause I, <laughs> no, I, actually, we don't. <laughs> it's called I Loved Him to Death. Ah, okay. Ah. Because it's exactly what I did because of loving him so much, I was able to help the process. And going back to my four Hollywood husbands the story of your life with Roger, yeah. which, which spanned above and beyond the 20 years that you shared the last 20 years when you were married. But he was, he is the love of your life. And it speaks to the old adage, um, good things come to those who wait. Yeah, yes, right. And you know, our song was the song from the uh, Umbrellas of Sherberg, If It Takes Forever, I Will Wait For You. Yeah. For a thousand summers, I will wait for you. If it takes forever. <laughs> and as I walk down the aisle to marry Roger, that's a, a friend of ours sang that song. Better than me. Yes. I'm, I'm, yes. <laughs> or, or as the Irish like to say, if it's for you, it will not move past you. I mean, the story of your life together is just for anyone who has had a relationship like that, you know, where you want to go forward, but the timing isn't right. But yeah. if it's meant to be, it will come back to you. That's right. Exactly right. And that that energy, that unspoken energy when we first met was so strong. And I said to Roger, when he was in the process of transitioning, I said, honey, you know, that energy that we always had, we loved you loved your wife that you married, and I loved my husband. Mm-hmm. But there was always that energy between us that never went away. And I said, and as you go into spirit, that energy is still going to be there. My energy connected to you mm-hmm. I believe is that. forever yeah. there. Yeah. I don't know if you follow John Edward, but I understand that one of his teachings is that when we leave this world, we make ourselves available to our loved ones in some other form. And Absolutely, yes. Yeah. And in our family's case, my father comes in the form of a penny, and my mother comes in the form of a dime. And so, and, and again, this may sound silly, but there have been many moments in my life where, you know, I was going through something, and there was uncertainty. It's like, what am I going to do? And I turn around and I find a dime on my... It is, it's just so amazing you're saying this because uh, I used to think that picking up a penny was good luck. Mm-hmm. But my stepdaughter, Roger's daughter, told me, no, that means someone in heaven 
is thinking about you. Yeah. Oh. And since Roger passed away, each month at a really difficult time, I have looked down and there's been a penny, mm-hmm. and I've saved them up. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I believe it. You know. <laughs> oh, I do too. Yeah. And sometimes I think they come. Uh, in the form of friends saying just the right thing at yes. the right time. Yeah. I mean, uh, I in my book I write about Mariette Hartley giving me a book mm-hmm. called The Code Alcoholic. Mm-hmm. And that like, was like an angel speaking to me because that really started me on the road to understanding my part in uh, codependency and feeding the disease of alcoholism. I think angels come in all different forms, and uh, and you talking about the dime and the penny. When I was taking Roger's ashes up to Colorado to put in the uh, wildflowers mm-hmm. where we had decided we wanted to be outside the music tent in Aspen, and I I had them in my hand in a box, and I had to turn them over to the security people uh, to look at. And when they took them out of my hands, I thought I was going to collapse. And just and I was by myself, and I just thought, I, how am I going to, I'm going to collapse. I'm going to just collapse right here. And I held on to the, 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 the conveyor belt thing there, mm-hmm. and, and I looked down, and there was a penny. Yeah. And I just said, Okay, I'm all right. Yeah. I can do this. Yeah. No, and just like you said, every time you kind of need that, yeah. there it is. Yeah. But you you have to be open to it. Absolutely. Absolutely. Joyce, I don't know if you saw the animated film Coco that won the Oscar last year. I did not, but I heard it was wonderful. Well, I've got to see it. It's a two Kleenex box movie, but... Uh, not only is it a great film, I think, for parents to introduce their youngsters to understand if they've lost a loved one, how to perhaps in their mind understand where they went, at least in a way. But I, f- I think that the idea of Dia de los Muertos is something we should all kind of embrace. Yeah. It's beautiful. Yeah. Be- and I, my father passed away in 2004, but I feel like he is always with me, and that's what I tell people is that they are there. He's in my dreams very frequently, just just there, uh, like it's normal, not necessarily dispensing wisdom or like in Lion King or anything like that, but just there. I I do think that they don't really leave you. It's never going to be easy, but they care. They still care. They know. There used to be a, a question on... The actor studio, what do you think God will say when you meet him? It was something like that. Yeah, yeah. And I think and my answer is, your father has told me so much about you. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. What do you think God will say to you when you meet him at the pearly gates? Oh, my goodness. Why did you tell all those naughty jokes? <laughs> <laughs> Betty White, Betty White used to say to me, she said, you know, when Joyce tells a naughty joke, it it sounds like a nursery rhyme. (laughs) (laughs) I I guess that's why I get away with it a little bit. (laughs) On the line with us is Joyce Bullifant. Joyce Bullifant, author of my four Hollywood husbands. We'll take a quick time out, then we'll talk some more with Joyce when we come back on TV Confidential. Got a product or service that you want our listeners to know about? Become an advertiser or underwriter of TV Confidential and let our brand help promote your brand. For more information, go to televisionconfidential.com forward slash advertise or visit the TV Confidential page at advertisecast.com. Buying or selling a home can be one of the most stressful things we'll ever do in life, but it doesn't have to be. And no one knows better than our friends at Front Porch Realty Group. Their community of realtors serving the Northern Bay Area of California that cares about their clients as individuals first and foremost. Whether you're a first-time buyer or looking to lease or sell your property in the Bay Area, Front Porch Realty Group will help you through this important transition by providing you with the right information for your situation while lessening the pain. 
They also work with a network of realtors throughout California who provide the same high caliber of customer service. Call Front Porch Realty Group at 415-886-7411 for a realtor referral near you. You can also visit their website, frontporchrealtygroup.com, for more information on the services they provide, including upcoming workshops and seminars. For more information, call 415-886-7411 or visit frontporchrealtygroup.com. Front Porch Realty Group. They'll find the solution that works best for you. One more item, the Disneyana Fan Club Collectible Show on Sale is the place to go to find the very best Disney collectibles and products old and new for purchase. This year's Disneyana Fan Club Collectible Show and Sale takes place Sunday, May 5th from 9 a.m. to 5 p.m. at the Delta by Marriott Hotel, located at the corner of Chapman and Harbor, south of Disneyland in Garden Grove, California. Everything Disney will be there that day, including collectibles of all ages, artwork, figurines, stamps, postcards, CDs, and albums. Special guests scheduled to appear that day will include Will Ryan, Margaret Tinkerbell Kelly, and TV Confidential's Greg Airbar. There will also be a silent auction, plus door prizes, raffles, and a whole lot more. For tickets and more information, go to DisneyAnnaFanClub.org, DisneyAnnaFanClub.org. You can listen to this show all over again as a podcast on TuneIn, iTunes, Spreaker, SoundCloud, Stitcher, and other podcast platforms. Best of all, it's free. To find out how to subscribe to the TV Confidential podcast, go to the homepage at televisionconfidential.com and click subscribe now. Hi, this is Richard Pryor Jr., and you're listening to TV Confidential. Ed Robertson along with Greg Airbar and our guest Joyce Bullifant. Joyce's book, My Four Hollywood Husbands, is the story of Joyce's life and career, which spans the worlds of film, television, and the Broadway stage, but it is also a story about eternal love that is woven through the fabric of the entertainment world. Joyce's book also offers a rare glimpse of two of the most respective legends in the world of entertainment, Ellen Hayes, the first lady of American theater and the grandmother of two of her children, and Lillian Gish, the accomplished actress that Joyce considered her favorite. Godmother. My Four Hollywood Husbands is available through Amazon.com as well as JoyceBullifant.com. You can follow Joyce on Twitter at JoyceBullifant as well as Facebook.com forward slash JoyceBullifant official. Joyce Bullifant can also be seen in the Amazon Prime original movie I Hate Kids, directed by her son John Asher and starring Tom Everett Scott and Titus Burgess. I Hate Kids also marks the final screen appearance of Joyce's husband, Roger Perry. Greg? Oh, one other thing I wanted to ask about Happiest Millionaire is, Uh do you have any anecdotes about members of the cast? (laughs) Leslie Ann Warren, who you worked with directly, or John (laughs) Davidson? Because I know you were in a scene Uh, with him. Well, I'll tell you who I just thought was incredible talent, and and that's Tommy Steele. Yes. Oh my gosh, he's He's unbelievable. He's so charming, and he's so nice, and he taught me how to do seances. (laughs) Really? (laughs) Yeah. He did. The writer, A.J. Carruthers, and his wife, Carol, who, by the way, is about to open my front door at any moment. Okay. Um, Stay with me. Um, All of us, and I've forgotten. Oh, Jimmy. I was married to Jimmy. Mm -hmm. Jimmy and me, Carol and A.J., Tommy Steele, and I guess his wife. And he taught us about doing a, a glass upside down with the letters around a circle and putting your finger on it, the glass would move. And, man, did that glass move. But Carol and A.J. had twin boys, and the glass kept saying Mickey Mouse, Mickey Mouse. It kept writing Mickey Mouse. And we said, what in the world? Why is it doing that? You know, we were wor- working at Disney and everything, and it said, Mickey Mouse sick, Mickey Mouse sick. We thought, what in the world? And then one of the little babies was crying, and Carol went in, and he had Mickey Mouse pajamas on and had a fever. Oh. <laughs> really weird. <laughs> wow. But Tommy really was into it. He said one time the glass would fly off the table, and, oh, I love all that mysterious stuff. I <laughs> so much fun. <laughs> Other people think it's kind of crazy, and it is kind of crazy, but it's fun crazy. Yeah. Uh, but he said that his sister, who had passed away, w- said she was going to come see him 
at 2 o'clock and when he was alone. And he went to Piccadilly Square and stood there. He got so scared. Mm. <laughs> well, he had all of us believing everything. But he was probably manipulating it. But he, we totally <laughs> went along with it. It was really fun. He just turned 81. He's still with us. He did? Yes. I'd love to be in touch with him. It was so sweet. I hope he's still married to Anne. She was such a sweet lady. He's in England, yes, yes. probably. Yeah, and he, I don't know if he did last year, but he did Scrooge every year, the musical. That became a tradition. So he was still performing, uh, yeah. Oh, I'd love to see him. Uh, Walt, this is something you might not know. Walt Disney had in the works a series for Tommy and me and Leslie Ann and oh. John Davidson. Oh. And the series was that uh, Leslie Ann and I were guides at Disneyland and Tommy and uh, Davidson were our boyfriends. Wouldn't that have been fun? Yeah. That would have been fun. That would have been I know. Fantastic. Can we do it now? <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> In charge of the old fogies at Disney. Yes. Yes. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll make a call. We'll yeah, make a few calls. We'll make a few calls. <laughs> we need a good writer. Absolutely. Lots of imagination. Absolutely, absolutely. Well, there's actually a lot of Disney history with you and with James MacArthur and with Helen Hayes. And yes. I, I remember when you were at the D23 Expo, you talked about how even years before you did Happiest Millionaire, you were on the movie sets of a lot of the classic films like Swiss Family Robinson and things like oh, that. Oh, yes. I got pregnant on that set. <laughs> <laughs> but, but behind the camera. Not, not the actual set, but on location. <laughs> we, were, we were on an island in Tobago for six months, and everybody else was being creative, so I thought I should be <laughs> That's how I got my Charlie, my firstborn son. <laughs> Where are you going to go with that one? <laughs> I just wondered if you had, um, you mentioned the encounter with Walt Disney once before. Were there any other stories about that that you could share? Was that the only time you met him? Oh, no, I met him, I'm trying to think, the first time, oh, the first time, I think, was on um, uh, Third Man on the Mountain, when I was visiting Helen had taken me to Europe. It was shot in Switzerland. That's where the Matterhorn ride comes from. Yes. And uh, Helen had taken me there to, uh, to see Jimmy and my first trip to Europe, and uh, that's all in my book, too, mm -hmm. and I met uh, Mr. Disney at that time, and I, I just thought, wow, that's Walt Disney. <laughs> that's nice. <laughs> He's a nice gentleman. I think he had on, he had on kind of a Swiss hat, one of those velvet hats, and uh, a green velvet hat with a little uh, feather in it that they wear, the Tyrolean hat. Yes. And he may have had lederhosen on, if I remember correctly. And I just thought he was a very impressive-looking man. And later in life, his daughter, uh, Sharon Disney, uh, became a very close friend. And I directed his grandchildren in a, a play that I did at a school for dyslexic children where John was. So I was quite involved with the Disney family and Diane Disney lived down the street from me in Tarzana when Jimmy and I were married, and we both lived in a home that was uh, designed by a lady, a famous architect lady designer, of, a, of an English carriage house. It was a wonderful home. I dream about that home a lot. Isn't that funny? That was my first real home. I think that's why. But uh, Diane Disney had the same type of house down the street from us. Well, my first house was located on Princess Diana Court, which is not Disney-like, but it, that should be a Disney name. My goodness, really? Yeah. The complex was called Tierra, so all the street names had royalty. Oh, and, I like that. I yeah. like that. I love anything to do with royalty. Yeah, and I had to renew my driver's license within a year of purchasing the house, and I'm standing in line at the DMV, and the complex was so new that, that the street names had not registered with the city of Vallejo. I was living in Vallejo at the time. 
I finally come up to my place in line, and the person at the DMV looks at my application, looks at me, and says, are you kidding? Princess Diana Court. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. <laughs> We're talking to Joyce Bullifont, the actress all of you know for her many appearances on such popular game shows as Match Game and Password, as well as her roles in such film, TV, and stage productions as The Mary Tyler Moore Show, Love Thy Neighbor, The Bill Cosby Show, Perry Mason, Alcoa Presents, The Paisley Convertible, Disney's The Happiest Millionaire, and of course, Airplane. Joyce's book by four Hollywood Husbands is the story of her life and career, interwoven through the story of her marriages to James MacArthur, Edward Mallory, William Asher, and Roger Perry, my four Hollywood husbands, available through Amazon.com as well as JoyceBullifont.com. You can follow Joyce on Twitter at JoyceBullifont as well as Facebook.com forward slash JoyceBullifont. Official 2019 is the 40th anniversary of the release of Airplane, Joyce, I understand you had, you had a screening of Airplane not too long ago. You, it was the first time you saw that movie in years. Yes, well, I, well, I had neighbors recently uh, invited me over. I had a red carpet out and uh, just a few friends to watch it. And some had never seen it, and they were falling off their chairs watching it. You know, I didn't want to do that movie. I... I thought it was the most stupid script I ever read in my life with people coming down the baggage claim and I, and the, the airplane going into the... Tur- I, this, is, this doesn't make any sense. And I was married to William Asher at the time. He said, you are an actress. You act. And that's the only reason I did it. <laughs> <laughs> but I, <clears throat> I was happy to hear later that Peter Graves had the same reaction. Mm-hmm. He thought he didn't want to do it either. <laughs> Well, you mentioned William Asher. One of the uh, takeaways of reading My Four Hollywood Husbands is that your marriage to Bill before your marriage to Roger, your marriage to Bill was, was for the most part, a, a successful, a stable marriage until up until the very end. But what I remember the most is that that was not the first time he would say something like, you're an actress, Joyce. I mean, in fact, if I remember correctly, there was a time during that period when, because you've always been a very practical, grounded person, there was a time the phone was not ringing as often as it used to, so you were looking to possibly pursue a career as an interior decorator because you also had a gift for that. And Bill said, no, you're an actress. You should be acting. That's true. I used to do interior design work uh, in between acting jobs because I had little children that I had to support. Mm -hmm. So I had to keep busy. Luckily, I was really acting most of my life. From the time I was 14, I was so fortunate to always be working. But there were those dry periods, and so I did interior design. And then when Bill and I were married, uh, one of the builders I had worked for came to me and wanted to offer me my whole huge office and to do all the new homes he was doing, and he was going to pay me quite a bit of money. Mm-hmm. And I was excited about it, because that's very creative work, too. And Bill said, no, you're an actress. You act. <laughs> he said, okay. <laughs> At the time, I also, everything when I married Bill, I signed a lot of quick claim deeds. Yeah. And I really didn't have any money on my own. And I thought, you know, I said, if if you leave me, uh, all of a sudden, some young chick comes by and you say, adios, what am I supposed to do? So I, that sort of turned the tables a little bit, and he uh, was a little bit more generous then. Yes. <laughs> but I was going to take the job just so I'd have money in, absolutely. in absolutely. my name. Absolutely. And again, that is one of many stories that you can read more about in My Four Hollywood Husbands, which is available through Amazon dot com. Greg and I were, were talking about this just before we called you. It was, and tell me if I'm wrong, it was around the time you were married to Bill that you first started doing a lot of game show appearances. Oh, yes, I was. I think it was before I was married to Bill I was doing those. Well, I've talked to a number of people such as yourself who have done a lot of game shows, and that's a different kind of performing in that you're not playing a character, you're being Joyce. Yes, and that's hard. <laughs> <laughs> Some actors are terrified of that. Yeah. Yes, actors are terrified of showing their true colors. 
<laughs> and my my difficulty was being dyslexic. I can't spell. And on match game, you have to write down the answers, and then you show them, them to Jean uh, Rayburn. Mm -hmm. And I, I was petrified. Lots of times, I could not spell the words, so that's why I came up with those crazy answers of something I could spell. <laughs> you know, just and and one day. I remember the word well. It was stethoscope. <laughs> oh, my. No way. There's no way I could spell that. But there was just no no way around it. I had to write that. It, or it was, I, I would appear more blonde than I am. <laughs> I had it all figured out that I'd take it out of the spot, say the word, and put it back in really fast so Jean wouldn't see it. So he walked by and he said, okay, what does Blondie have to say? And I said, stethoscope. And I didn't put it right back in. And he walked away and he said, wow, I can't believe she got it right. <laughs> he stopped in his tracks, turned around and said, wait a minute. How did you spell that? And I went, oh, no. And I took it out and he took it and he showed the world how I spelled and that was a terrible moment for me. Of course, I, I laughed my way through it. Mm -hmm. But for anyone who is dyslexic and has gone through that struggle, they know that that was a pretty hurtful moment. That, that's like the teacher showing it to the whole class. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. And in a way, that's sort of a capsule. Of, look, that would never have happened today because we have a lot more awareness of not only dyslexia but autism if it were handled on tape, it would either be cut or it would be handled a lot more sensitive. But back then, because we didn't know, there was not the sort of knowledge and awareness of these sort of things. The perception was Joyce couldn't spell. Joyce must not be very bright. And that was not the case at all. And there's people who... But it just... makes you feel not very bright. Exactly. And you know what? I think a little bit of my codependency was lack of of self-esteem mm -hmm. and not understanding because I did not know that I was dyslexic until I was uh, married to Bill mm -hmm. Asher mm -hmm. and in my 40s. And all of a sudden it was like, wow, I'm not stupid. I just learned differently. Yeah. And then it became an absolute passion with me to create a public awareness program for dyslexia and did two films about it, a musicals with dyslexic children and Hollywood stars, so that people would learn that it's a condition that is, uh, if treated properly in school, then you learn. Uh, you, it's just a different way of learning. Yeah, and our, and our challenge as people is to recognize that it's a different way of learning and to adapt ourselves to respond to that so that, okay, maybe it takes a little more effort on our part as the teacher to communicate to that particular student, but that's what teaching is all about, finding a way to communicate to the student, you know, regardless of what their background is. Right. We're not all, we're not all cookie cutters. That's right. <laughs> that's right. On the line with us is Joyce Bullifant. Joyce Bullifant, author of My Four Hollywood Husbands. We'll take a quick time out, then we'll talk some more with Joyce when we come back on TV Confidential. Become an advertiser or underwriter of TV Confidential and let our brand help promote your brand. For more information, go to televisionconfidential.com forward slash advertise or visit the TV Confidential page at advertisecast.com. Ed Robertson, along with our friend Donna Allen Figueroa, who I understand has a new book out. Yes, it's entitled Fall Again Beginnings. It's the first part of a four-part contemporary romantic series a set against the background of working actors. Something that you know a, little, a thing or two well, about. Well, you write what you know, and I have been working in the business for several years. It is not necessarily autobiographical, but it's based on... Sure, many of the experiences that the actors in my book have, many have happened to me, many have happened to friends of mine. It's not if you're looking for... Valley of the Dolls, it's not, it's grounded in reality. It is grounded in reality, and it's the first in a series. Yes. Called the Fall Again series. Fall Again. Which is available as a paperback as well as an ebook and in Kindle. But fallagainseries.com. 
We're Biffle, Biffle and Schuster. How do you do? We turned up here to spread some cheer and entertain you. That's right. We're Biffle and Schuster. I'm Benny Biffle, and this is Sammy Schuster. And we're here to tell you about this amazing DVD, not BVD, DVD that just came out from a company called Kino Lorber. And you know what Kino Lorber means, don't you, Sammy? I sure do. It means sales. <laughs> Lots of sales. This collection is called The Misadventures of... Biffle this? and Schuster. That's right. Mm-hmm. Those guys are it's terrific. Good. Yeah, you know what uh, Joe Dante says about them? What did he say? He says, forehead slapping funny. What impresses is the dogged authenticity to the era, which makes it all the more hilarious. Absolutely. Accent on the high. We're Biffle, Biffle and Schuster, Schuster, as you can see. see. No, no one, one else can make, make that statement louder than we. They say we're soporific and it's probably we. Because we're Biffle and Schuster. Oh, we're Biffle and Schuster. No, no. We're Biffle and Schuster. B-I-F-F-L, Biffle. S-H-W-S to Schuster. Biffle and Schuster. Need we say more? Available wherever DVDs are sold through our friends at Kino Lorber. TV Confidential is available online for listening on demand as a podcast through iTunes, Spreaker, Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, and anywhere else where you could download podcasts. You can also listen to recent episodes of TV Confidential on demand for free on the Listen Now page at televisionconfidential.com. Hi, this is Will Ryan, the voice of the uh, Herald Seahorse in The Little Mermaid. Presenting TV Confidential. Ed Robertson with a reminder that the next edition of TV Confidential will premiere next week on the station at the usual time. Our guests will include Kirk Taylor. Kirk is one of the stars of Revival. Revival will be released in theaters in select cities on Friday, April 19th. In the meantime, Greg Airbar is with us along with our guest this hour, Joyce Bullifant. Joyce's book, By Four Hollywood Husbands, is the story of her life and career, interwoven through the story of her marriages to James MacArthur, Edward Mallory, William Asher, and Roger Perry. My Four Hollywood Husbands is available through Amazon.com as well as JoyceBullifant.com. You can follow Joyce on Twitter at JoyceBullifant as well as Facebook.com forward slash Joyce Bullifant Official. Joyce is also Executive Vice President of the Dyslexia Foundation, where she campaigns for the rights of children. She is also a former trustee of the Orton Dyslexia Foundation and is founder of the Dyslexia Awareness Program. Joyce is also the founder of the Hans Christian Anderson Award, uh, which, which recognizes dyslexics who have made positive contribution to society among the previous recipients the Hans Christian Anderson Award, our Oscar winner Whoopi Goldberg, and Emmy Award winning writer-producer Stephen J. Cannell. And when you talk about your background, growing up with feelings that I'm not as smart as everybody else, that's exactly what Cannell went through. And again, because people didn't know what was going on. Exactly, exactly. Once the light bulb went on and I was told... Uh, There was a label to it, and some people don't believe in labeling. They think that's not good. But uh, I was once told by a teacher, how would you like to go into a hospital and instead of labeling that you had appendicitis, that they sent you to the heart doctor who didn't know anything about appendicitis? It's much better to have a label and know how to fix that Mm -hmm. label Mm -hmm. or help that label than to go to the wrong place. Yeah. Well, there are labels and there are labels. And if you look at the people like Hans Christian Andersen and Stephen Cannell, who are great, brilliant, brilliant writers who may have handed in a script that had typos in it, or Hans Christian Andersen, they didn't have scripts. Right. And, you know. But I always think of what Jack Klugman famously said, and I'll often say that because I don't know that I'm dyslexic, but I make typos. I love to say what Jack Klugman said. I can hire a proofer. I can hire someone to spell. I need to hire writers. So that's, that's a step, right. you know. Isn't that the truth? Yeah. Absolutely. You know what Stephen Cannell's secretary, Grace, said about Stephen's script? She said, it'd be easier to decipher them if he just fell over the typewriter. <laughs> 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 I love that. You did two episodes of... Perry Mason, one with Raymond Burr, one without Raymond Burr. You have a wonderful story 
in my four Hollywood husbands about the one without Raymond Burr, which was with Walter Pigeon. You have a wonderful story about Walter Pigeon and his huge hands. Yeah. But I don't remember if you talked about Ray- Raymond Burr. Did, did, do you have any memories of working with Raymond Burr? I do. I remember that being an actress and being a trained actress, that you look at the person in the eye when you're talking to them mm-hmm. you know, in the scene, and, and he kept looking over my shoulder. And so I would move a little bit to try to make eye contact. He wouldn't make eye contact with me. And I couldn't figure it out. You know, why, why does he look over to my shoulder? And, and I keep moving, and the cameraman would say, Joyce, you're moving out of the shot. Go back. And I'd say, okay, and I'd go back. And then he'd look again over, and I thought it was so disconcerting. So finally I turned around, and he was reading a teleprompter. That's why he wasn't looking at me in the eye. That's right. He was. He had all that dialogue, especially in the courtroom scenes. Right, exactly. I, the amazing thing was he had it down in such a way that at least when it comes across on screen, you couldn't tell he was reading off a teleprompter. I mean, just he would. He Not would, at all. He would sell Not it. Not at all. But I, I can understand as his fellow actor in the scene that could be disconcerting. Well, you know, you, you people look at you in the eye when you're acting. Yeah. And I, I, I just kept moving and moving. Yeah. Well, because acting is reacting, and you right. you want to play off his eyes, not off his shoulder or his necktie. <laughs> <Okay>. <laughs> but I learned. I learned. Yes. Well, uh, I know you have company coming over. Thank you so much, as always, for talking to us. Joyce Bullifont, my four Hollywood husbands, available at JoyceBullifont.com, Amazon.com, wherever books are sold online. And please, Joyce when you're ready to release your next book, I Loved Him to Death, please, please, please visit us once again on TV Confidential. I will. Thank you so much. And it was such fun talking to you. You can follow Joyce on Twitter at Joyce Bullifant as well as Facebook.com forward slash Joyce Bullifant Official. A reminder that you can now hear TV Confidential on your smart speaker just by saying, Alexa, play TV Confidential, enabling the TV Confidential Alexa skill is easy to find out how to do it. Go to televisionconfidential.com forward slash Alexa.